Hi, I'm Shane Molander, a state archivist for the State Historical Society of North Dakota. Uh, today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about home movies and their place in history and their importance uh, in uh, understanding history and remembering history. Right now we are outside of the Governor's Gallery in the Heritage Center. It has an exhibit in it right now called Fashion and Function, North Dakota Style. One of the things that the archives has is film and movies. We have news film, we have film from state agencies, and we also do have some home movies uh, that we preserve. And uh, in this case, the museum decided to use some of the footage that we have in the archives from uh, a collection of home movies. Scenes of everything from birthdays to Christmases to summer vacations. The Casper Nervig family um, actually donated that to the Historical Society a few years ago and it has excellent color and it's just really great and it really works great in the fashion and function uh, uh, gallery. We try to promote people to save their home movies. One of the ways you can preserve your film is actually apply for the Al Larvik Conservation Fund. They have been uh, funding people to digitize and preserve their family films for several years now. Uh, we've been a partner with them in helping to promote, uh, promote that, and it's been a good thing. Uh, what you're going to see now is several um, of the awardees uh, films that have been digitized uh, over the past few years and you'll probably get some comments uh, from the people that are maybe in the fam uh, in the home movies as well uh, to help guide you through as to what's going on so thanks for stopping in and enjoy Welcome to the Casper J. Renner Home Movies and Community History Collection. My dad, Cap Renner, was born and spent most of his life in Richardson, North Dakota. The 40 years of movies he took include a, a lot of the history of southwestern North Dakota. Cap was the international harvester dealer at Renner Implement from 1956 to 1984. I'm his daughter, Carol, and here's a look at the inside of the shop and one of the mechanics. Um, there were many over the years that it was open. And then of course, we're outside of the, uh, the implement dealership. If you sell, uh, tractors and equipment, you got to show them off. And so I'm guessing these are, are the 1950s to early 1960s footage. The lot was located and the building was located really across from the Richerton, uh, grain elevator. Of course, if you sell equipment, you also got to test it out in the field. I think this is south of Richerton on the Schreiber homestead, which was my mom's family. I'm not sure who's driving. Um, jumping off the tractor might have been Johnny Portscheller and maybe my Uncle Bill and, and one of my um, other relatives on the tractor. This is actually at the Schreiber homestead south of Richerton, my lovely Aunt Rose. And uh, the clip then moves on to, this is our house in... Um, Richardson. My dad actually added on to it and built most of it and included the appliances direct from the Sears Roebuck catalog. This particular clip uh, you're seeing now is the machinery lot again on the south side of Richardson of um, Renner Implement where lots of things were stored. And uh, my dad also took a lot of community activities and, and films. He was mayor of Richerton for about um, 32 years and really enjoyed helping the community and all the business people getting together. I think that's Victor Getz, maybe, running through the street there. Um, here's a look at some of the, the local streets and the, the cars and such, um, which I also th think you get great, that's one of my cousins there, you get great dating on these films by just looking at... Uh, what types of cars? That red and white one I remember is one that we had, uh, an old Chevy, I believe. But you can often date some of the films by the fashions you see and everything else. Here we're back to uh, 
one of the harvest festivals in Richerton. Always important in any of these parades that you have the local Richerton Saddle Club. Oh, there's one of my cousins. There's two of my cousins. And that was an old IH truck that we had. There's my dad taking a selfie before selfies were actually a thing. <laughs> there's a lot of footage we have of um, rodeos that the Richerton Saddle Club uh, put on. My dad and Chuck Huff and a number of others, uh, I think, founded the original Saddle Club, and which is still going strong, which is great. And they all helped build the... Um, Rodeo ground south of Richerton, which is not too far from my dad's shop at the time. And because um, if you're in a, a rural area, right, what you do is you get together and everybody uh, takes apart and, and uh, makes things happen. You know, these rodeos were tremendously popular. I think this footage would have probably been early 60s. Um, you can take a look at the, the cars, 50s maybe. But these are, oh, there's an IH sign on the back. My my dad loved to advertise. So back in the day, um, you know, everybody came out. You can see the ladies in their Sunday best. Watching everything from uh, bronc riding to bull riding and roping and barrel racing and pole bending. And I was, was fascinated by the bull riding and the bronc riding because... Eight seconds or ten seconds, it used to be back in the day. Um, how they hung on was beyond me. Oh, that's one of the Rabel girls from south of town. Their farm was uh, close to my mom's, the Schreiber homestead. So you take a look at these, and back in the day, there were no bleachers. bleachers. Later, they built some bleachers, but oh, that's one of the Rabel boys. Great camera work by my dad getting close up. You know, these old cameras weren't always the best for clarity. And they were great for shooting outside, though, and getting some of the basic footage. Um, but originally, the rodeo grounds didn't have bleachers built or anything. So you have all these people sitting close to the fence. And um, I do remember as a kid, on occasion, there would be a, a bronco or a bull who was quite angry coming straight for that fence. And People moved pretty fast because um, there was nothing else to, to break. And I do wonder if sometimes a few of them did break through the fence. But So you can see women in their dresses in their Sunday best and everybody coming together and enjoying the entertainment. I think that's Mrs. Uh, Lorraine Rabel there. So after everybody spent a hard week working, they'd all get together and and visit and go to rodeos and these um, local community harvest celebrations and, and see all their neighbors and, and have a good time. So, and interestingly too, over the years, you know, out of Western North Dakota, there were certainly some um, world champion rodeo riders that, that came out of the western part of the state. Brad Germanson is one who who certainly springs to mind. There are others as well. Now, my father loved taking these movies. Oh, I think that's Tony Rabel from south of Richardson, North Dakota. My father loved taking these movies. I, I don't ever remember him typically without another selfie, uh, without a, uh, you know, first a film camera in his hand. He loved to film everything. Or um, a still camera. He had some of those original old black and white Polaroid cameras. And he just loved recording everything that was going on in the community and family events and Oh, that's a great crowd at that rodeo. I do love the kid who cut out, apparently, a box to put on his head there to keep the sun off. Oh, another great selfie of my dad, Cap Renner. So it's really a, a, a gift to have 40 years of both some of the activities in the community and um, family activities that he 
took footage of over 40 years, so this is just a a small piece of the, the larger collection. Oh, man, that ground is hard. Yep, there, people are starting to move. There was one coming toward the fence. But you saw a lot of great talent at um, at these rodeos and from an early age, too. Sometimes with the, oh, I think you can recognize some of them. Maybe some of those are some neighbors that you remember from southwestern North Dakota. I think my dad loved the rodeos because of the community of it all. It was entertaining. Um, if you had a great announcer, they were just like a color commentator in sports, you know, added to the event as well. Oh, there's one of my cousins. This footage must have been after a storm. I, I don't know the, the full context of it, but it sure looks like something got crushed. Oh, there's the runner implement truck and a flatbed, and I think probably the Sodbusters band or another band and the Richerton Saddle Club. And, and like a lot of small towns, Richerton and many small towns in, in North Dakota, when they had a ton of local businesses, I mean, you can see there, there were two car dealerships and for a while, Two grocery stores, a dry goods store, three bars, um, the bank, the bowling alley, just all sorts of um, really active business community in these small towns that really added vibrancy and, and life to them. My favorite was the local drugstore because they had one of those uh, soda fountains, the old-fashioned soda fountains, and it was always a treat to go there. I also love that they take the parade right through town. So, you know, maybe some of the older folk who couldn't get out could still see the activities as it's driving through town. It's always fun to see um, the old cars and what were the current cars at the time when gas was cheap and Fins were long and cars were large, and we used to call them boat cars. They were some big pieces of metal for sure. I often think my dad liked the rodeo so much because he loved horses, because obviously that's how you grow up, uh, working on the farm with horses back in the day. Now this, uh, I believe, is probably the local... 4-H livestock judging going on. I do remember they brought them right in the middle of town. A couple of guys got a bird's eye view on the roof there. Um, and so the local kids could show off the livestock they were raising, get judged. I do like the, that they you know, put in a bunch of those old cars in the street to, <laughs> in case any of the animals got away. That's uh, by a local hardware store in Richardson at the time. But you can see lots of people turned out for these events. I see Keller Cleaners in the background and the local bar and bowling alley on that street. And there used to be a local law office in the street there. Everybody's waiting for the judges to, to give out the ribbons. Oh, looks like there's an uncooperative <laughs> one right there. It was a great opportunity for kids to show off um, what they're working on and how they took care of their animals.
I'm not sure who this is coming down the road. Like I said, the resolution on some of these old films are a little bit hazy. Well, this was a big event. This was a good turnout. Everybody wanted to see who won and what was going on. Well, that's the old uh, fire station in City Hall in Richardson. I do remember one year as a kid, I do think that one of the animals got away, which caused a little excitement around town. I do like the old guys in their hats standing around giving their opinion and doing their own set of judging there. I always wondered after these livestock and horse events, who was the person that got to clean up the street afterwards? Oh, this footage I think is at a one-room country school that my mom taught at. Uh, my mom, Caroline Renner, taught country school in the late 1950s. The one-room country schoolhouse where the, you know, you had all grades in one room and you taught them all and the big kids were helping the little kids and here they're out playing ball. Um, my mom taught elementary school for, for 42 years, but I know one of the schools that she taught at the country schools was um, Farmers Valley School District 19, where she earned $1,340 in annual salary that year. But she taught at a couple of country schools before um, moving in when the school was built in Richardson from 1961 to 1982, she taught in Richardson and then, uh, and then in 1982 to 96 into the combined Richardson uh, Taylor School District. I think there's a little shot coming up where you'll see just a teeny bit of the schoolhouse, but she loved being a teacher. Um, in fact, when she retired, one of her students wrote her, through your efforts, I learned to read and more importantly, to love learning. Thank you for the difference you made in my life. And that uh, that student turned out to go on and, and be a school administrator. But my mom taught kids and their kids and their grandkids. Um, that's a lot of elementary students in uh, 42 years, and, and she loved being a teacher. So I hope you've enjoyed uh, this look back at some of the history of southwestern North Dakota. And uh, there's more available in the Casper J. Renner Home Movies and Community History Collection. Thank you. I've always been the family's archivist, so a lot of the stuff that has to deal with our family papers, photos, whatever, usually comes to me or I'm the one that's seeking it out. I wanted to see these films because we didn't have any way to play them back anymore. We didn't have a player. A lot of the people in the films I never met. So that was a big thing for me. The filmmaker was Vernon Baltzer. He was my grandfather, and he's from Napoleon, North Dakota. So this is my grandfather, this is my Uncle Bruce, and the uh, one and the only shot, and he looks terrifyingly like my brother. <laughs> we always kind of knew, but even his mannerisms. The films were shot mostly on 8mm. I think there was a couple 16mm films in the box. And I called my dad and I said, I think you guys have talked about home videos before. Do you know where they are and what, how many there are? And so, like, yeah, I think they're down in the basement somewhere. And they were in a nasty box and in all kinds of disarray. But some of them had description, other ones didn't. This camera was also in the basement with a lot of the other random assortment of my grandparents' lives. It's a Bell and Howell, and I have no idea what year it is or where he got it. 
Um, but I, I think most of the films were taken on this camera. My grandfather was born on a farm in 1921. His parents farmed just north of Napoleon. He grew up there, he went to Napoleon High School. Then he went to California for a little while. Uh, his next immediate sister also went to California. That was kind of the thing to do. And he was a tungsten miner, apparently. And then he joined the military. He was a flight instructor and he did that in, I think, Mississippi for the most part. And then after he got out of the military, he came back to Napoleon, um, was involved with the community there, but he wasn't doing what he loved. And so he was looking for something and he found it in Bismarck. He became the assistant aeronautics director of the State Aeronautics Commission. In that position, he went out to all the little airports across the state. He got them grant funding for airstrips. And he was also known as kind of a safety guy. So he was always helmets and making sure people were properly equipped. He did that from like the late 50s until he passed away in 1980. The movies were mostly recorded from, I'm guessing about 1941, 1942, until about 1976, 1977. They were just a regular North Dakota family. A lot of what he films shows how they celebrated birthdays, how the community celebrated events like Memorial Day, their anniversaries, and that kind of thing. The extended family, there's also vacations. They went to California a couple times, Alaska and South Dakota. The thing that drew me into it was I was at a family reunion and I didn't know most of the people there. And so I made like a family tree once I started figuring out who people were so that I could associate them easier in my brain and remember who they were. And everybody thought that was really cool. And I was like, well, I'm just trying to remember who everybody is. Yeah, there hasn't been any vultures in the Napoleon area for about 45 years or so. He filmed community events, so like football games, parades. I've got some of the, the parades in here. And the marching band is coming up here in just a second in the marching band. I just love their, I, I love the kick. <laughs> I love the kick. It's so awesome. And I'm not sure that I the home movies shows how people related to each other. And it also shows how they like to have fun with each other too, and how things were different, but really kind of the same as the way things are today. The thing that's most important to me about the home movie collection is that it shows what was important to my grandfather. Because, you know, you only film things that were important or an event. You see that his family the community, and he was very interested in aviation. That was his profession. So all of those things kind of go throughout all of the, the home movies. It kind of gave a glimpse of who they were. You know, I never met these people and I don't want them to be forgotten. Well, it's September 30th, 2021, and we're in Mandan, North Dakota. My name is Joel Winkler. I'm the son of 
of these two folks that are here as well, Garmin Winkler and Janice Winkler, my parents. I guess I could have had them introduce themselves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they uh, have worked on these through the years in the early 60s when my dad was in the military, through the early 70s when my brother and I were just little kids. And I'm Garmin Winkler. And uh, I don't know what else you want to know from me. I'm, <laughs> I'm 81 right now. <laughs> a couple of months, 82, and my young wife here. I'm Janice Winkler. We're in our home, which we've been in for almost 50 years. Well, there's a family reunion there <clears throat> in, in Glen Allen in North Dakota. And uh, I, was, I can't remember just who was back from the service or just uh, one of them. And so all, all of these are yeah. nephews, this nephew there, Dennis Wetzel, and uh, here's somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> Former girlfriend of dad's. <laughs> <laughs> That's my uh, grandma and grandpa there. Go ahead. Yeah, there's lot, lots of nephews and nieces there when they were when they were little and I was a little bit bigger. Brother Aaron. My brother Aaron is no longer alive and deceased. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's more. They're a pretty good group there, family. Yeah, dad's a, a family of uh, 10 uh, brothers and sisters total in the family. And so lots of lots of family. Yeah. Another brother Aaron again. Yeah. Yeah. And they're uh, Willard. <laughs> Willard, Willard the roof and another nephews. And Lots of nephews and nieces. Yeah, so it might be easier to see up over there. there. There's my mother and dad. Yeah, I guess I'm looking down here more. Yeah, yeah. So, that's great. So there's, well, there's some of my sisters of dads there. Yeah, yeah. Brother-in-law there. And then, there's dad. Yeah, that's, that's that's dad there. Yeah, Carmen there. My, that's me again there. Yeah, man. There I don't know who is. Dads are swimming somewhere. Yeah, that's where we're trying to figure out where this is. Is this at Lake Chida, you think? I think that's where it is, yeah. Uh, we had in south of camping. Glen Allen, North Dakota. That's no. Well, Chida would be. Lake Chida, oh, south of Glen Allen. I'm thinking Astor. Astor no, Glen. I think this is Lake Chida. Oh, this, well, it might so. be out west, too, because yeah, it, I don't in just a minute, you're going to be in. Like, uh, uh, no, this, yeah. this is out where we went camping. Okay, that we were, no, this is um, out in Washington State. Yeah. Tacoma, Washington, at the time they were helping paint your paint. sister's house. My brother, my sister, and brother-in-law, the Peltzes, all in Hilda Peltz. There's Paul Peltz, my brother-in-law, and they, nice. they're a professional painter there. I mean, <laughs> Those doors. <laughs> and oh, that Lyle, Lyle, <laughs> nephew of dad's, cousin mine. They, they got a lot of big family on their own now. There, there's more professionals. Doris. There's my sister Doris Winkler. She's the one that lives in Tacoma. Wogley, Wogley. Yeah. This would have been what, about 1960, I suppose. Yeah. Because really you were still in the service. Yeah. I remember doing that. I guess I tried to block out any work, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't believe it. Around here, it I can't. doesn't paint when I'm at home. Not allowed to paint here. <laughs> <laughs> Here's my brother in law, is 59 Ford. He come from Washington here, and there's that's me over there to the right, that young guy. It's my cousin Valerie there, being held by my uncle, Fred. Well, he has his lunch pail, he must come home from work. Oh, there's my mom. Oh, here we were at the Peace, Peace Gardens. Gardens and North Dakota. It's probably about 1961. 60, well, no, this would have right. been, oh, I don't know. That's 69. 60, no, you guys were just before you were married, probably. Okay. So this is 64, because okay. there's none yeah, of the kids there. here. Must have been there. Yeah. About 1964, 65. Could be. Somewhere in there. So, oh, there's my pet fish. No, I <laughs> just. Garment, don't fit. No, no, no. Oh, there's Virgil and Doris. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and this is the International Peace Garden in North Dakota. 
pretty much when it was fairly new. So yeah. it wasn't a, a lot there yet. Um, still there, of course, but it's been built up a little bit more, a lot more buildings and <clears throat> things to see. <laughs> Even a grass yeah, offer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And we have plenty of those. <laughs> That's the right on the border, of North Dakota and Manitoba, U.S. and Canada. Oh, there, there's the picture. Where mm -hmm. This might be up in Canada. You think yeah. it could be, or right? I don't know. They had an international music camp there, so I don't know if that's some of the buildings yeah, for that. Yeah, could have been. I don't remember. Of course. Oh, there's old vehicles. My dad had to see old vehicles. Oh, yeah. Probably an old Chevrolet truck, it looks like. There's my Model A pickup I bought up in uh, sold in North Dakota. I picked it up for $20. And I know you think I might have overpaid, but. <laughs> this is mom and dad's wedding. September, actually just a few days ago, September 25th, 1965. Yeah. And there Friends and nephews and nieces. Yeah. One uh, to the right, she's deceased. She got killed in a car accident. Dennis, my niece. Mom's sister is a maid of honor there on her left. There's, I am, there's my mother and her husband, and her son. <laughs> yes, <So>. that's you. <laughs> my cousin Marcia was a flower girl. My uncle Bob was a Ring bearer, <laughs> Grandma, Grandpa Breckel on the right, Mom, Mom's parents. This is in Mandan, North Dakota, by the way, too. Yeah. This is in Church of the Good Shepherd, actually, the church my mom and dad still are part of. It's, uh, it's called Mandan United Methodist Church now. There's, oh, there's niece. They had the same birthday. Yeah, it's my grandma, on her probably on her birthday in October, Mary, and Mary Lou. Same. Same day, uh, my niece. So all the all the good food. Is that Clyde? Mm -hmm. That's Clyde. So. Dennis, Dennis back there. Yeah. So this was in October. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> and I don't know. This might be out at your mom and dad's, uh, out on the farm. Do you think? Yeah, I, I don't because it's. Because uh, it goes into, uh, into the farm pictures out where Grandpa and Grandma Breckel lived. So I don't know if that I'm was it or not. Sure. I don't recognize. Did it look like I knew how to play that instrument? Oh, here we go. Here's, here's a Breckel farm up by, where is it? Denoff. Denoff, North Dakota. <laughs> Just goofing around, went fishing. And my Aunt Bonnie. These are my mom's um, youngest brother. Uncle Bob. Uncle Bob Breckel. Cats. Cats playing at the fish head. <laughs> and what's the name of your dog? Bowser. Bowser. It's always Bowser. They were always Bowser. My two aunts there, Bonnie and Paulette or Paula. <laughs> and it's a sister, Paula, and yeah. brother. And the farm is vacant now. Nobody lives lives there. As, well, your folks moved out in '66. My uncle mm -hmm. Tom there. My mom's brother. So my grandma Pauline, Grandpa Lloyd Breckel. <laughs> grandma again. Grandma Breckel. Mm -hmm. I mean your your mother. Mm -hmm. Picture fish head. Fish head. Yeah. Oh, there is, there is me, uh, my old pal there, working on my pal. <laughs> but, uh, picked it up in cold weather at, at the big park I was on. And a friend of mine is sitting in the back while I pulled it. This would have been 1966. Yeah. Not sure which one's which. I think I'm on the right. I think that's me on the right. My brother Jeff on the left. I think. I think that's the way I would see it. Yeah. I remember those uh, rubber dogs that are in the background there. We had those for the longest time. Had them even up and through grade school. Our our dog actually had those after a while and chewed on them. 
think that's me. That's uh, oh, that's always I, hard to tell. I think that's you were right. Is that, that me or Jeff? No, I think that's, that's Jeff. Jeff. Yeah, he had the thinner face. You had the cheeks. We're supposed to be identical twins, my brother and I, but there's distinguishing characteristics. <laughs> You're so cute. What happened? I <laughs> <laughs> should tell about how the clothes came into our. Oh, well, when we were, we didn't know we were having twins, and then this lady called us up. She saw it in the paper, and she had twins, and she gave, or we bought all this stuff from her. We're so thankful to have it. Everything tunes. Yeah, so it was good quality clothing because it was. Yeah, a, it was Carter. It was, uh, but quality. at a bargain bar, bargain price for yeah. my parents who didn't have a whole lot of money, and yet uh, were able to. So my brother and I dressed in style. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it seemed like <laughs> you did. Yeah. Well, things matching. We rented a pretty expensive place. Oh, there is me dig, me operating on the Bantam backhoes at my brother, but digging them some sewer line for my brother out in the country out of between Beulah and Glen Allen there. There's Reuben. My dad's the brother, Reuben, brother. oldest brother. Oldest brother. He'd have been 100 this summer. So there's 20 years difference between my dad and his oldest brother. My, Reuben was the oldest. My dad was the youngest. We'd be together. You'd think I was his son. Your brothers. Yeah, boy. Real professional there. <laughs> well, there, uh, <laughs> there you are. Yep. Um, you couldn't do much on that truck yet at that time. <laughs> this I don't know. This might be the Peace Garden again. I, can't I think tell. so. I think it. Yeah. Oh yes. Yeah. This is a, maybe a year or two later. I'm yeah. not sure if these are in chronological order on the on the yeah on this or not. No, See, there's, so there's Teresa, so she would have been 69. 69. 70, actually, because she was born. In the oh, yeah, yeah, 1970, summer of 1970. <clears throat> oh. <laughs> there you are. Some more of them clothes. Where they yeah, were. those uh, from that good, good clothes. <laughs> <laughs> They'd have been on rags otherwise. Uh -oh. <laughs> so, yeah, so a few more years later after the first pictures of the Peace right. Garden. This is the Badlands of North Dakota. Just a very brief clip. Near Medora. Yeah, near Medora. Oh. Oh. Of course, the prairie dog town in near to Roosevelt National Park, North Medora. It's a zoo. Yeah, this is a Dakota Zoo in Bismarck. Yeah, that's right. This probably would have been about 1970, 71. See how old the kids are. Yeah. <laughs> how old are we? Five or six. Come on, kids, watch out. Here, about out. four. That was about seventy or so. Yeah. They didn't quite get their fill on that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> they they had at the Dakota Zoo at the time. I don't think they have that anymore. They had these little. There's a train Places. that would go around. You could ride around and see all the animals or walk the path. But they had these little things you put in a dime or whatever and get corn 
and feed the animals with corn. I don't think they do that anymore. I'm sure they don't. It was a different era back then for zoos. It was probably less than a dime. We couldn't afford a dime. Yeah, it probably was a nickel. Yeah, more than likely a nickel. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Different way of a zoo there, black bear. There's a yeah, machine with feeders. the feeders that you could buy corn. Lion. Chinese pheasant, I think. Is that what it is? I think so. There's a dad's co-worker, um, oh. Clifford, Clifford that we worked with for, must have been together for the zoo. There's Clyde, the Cody out there. Really? No, this is a Kodiak bear. This is Clyde, the Clyde largest Cody, Cody. largest Kodiak bear in captivity at, at yeah. the time. And they stuffed him. <laughs> He's still <laughs> they, there. They, they That's right. They, they, they call taxidermy. Taxidermy, yeah. That's it. Hi, I'm Ann Luce, and I'm the audiovisual archivist at the State Historical Society of North Dakota. Home movies are important to moving image heritage because they provide historical records and depictions of daily life that are more realistic than, say, Hollywood feature films. Home movies aren't just important to the individual families they depict. We can see things in other people's home movies that resonate with us as well. We might say, oh, I had that same toy when I was a kid, or my parents had that same car, or I remember going to that parade. Furthermore, they can be used for research purposes, and they can also be used as archival footage in documentary films. Our home movie collections date as far back as the 1920s, and they depict scenes of domestic, rural, and urban life in North Dakota, as well as community events and travels all over the world. One such collection that I'm currently working on is the Leighton Hillborn family films. It spans from the 1930s through the 1970s, depicting multiple generations. Their father traveled the country with a movie camera and film projector, and he would host film screenings in the towns that they traveled to, as well as documenting their travels. One of the things that makes this collection even more interesting is the footage of their daughter, Grace Layton Sandness. She had polio and still went on to become a author and illustrator. Grace and her husband adopted 14 children who were from all over the world and some even had special needs. So that's one of the things that makes the footage really unique and special. Home movies in our collection also contain footage of travels and family vacations to multiple states and even different countries and continents and some even capture historical events. One such collection is the Dr. Eric P. Quain collection from the 1930s. It contains footage of vacations to Mexico, Europe, and the Middle East. It even contains footage of President Franklin Roosevelt's visit to Bismarck, North Dakota. Another interesting collection is the Waldo Wally Krober family films. In addition to depicting family and community events in North Dakota, it also contains footage that Wally shot while he served during World War II of the Pacific and Hawaiian Islands.
Mm-hmm.